Winchester, stand by. You're getting 44 Instavolt chargers in the very near future. And you heard it here first. And we heard it first from Matt and Stuart and Mike in Burger King in Preston Docks. And a touch of only fools and horses. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. Many content creators sit in a studio and search online for the latest news. But here at Dave Takes It On, we get out there and find the stories before they become news. For those who want the very latest, please subscribe. At a regular weekly meeting with Jonas, he's my son by the way, and cameraman and video and audio editor, we arrived on this occasion at a brand new Burger King at about six o'clock, where we had previously seen the groundwork preparations completed for an Instavolt installation in the car park that was due shortly. When we arrived, we found a van parked across the two bays, two is typical of Instavolt, and two guys sat inside peacefully eating. So, I do what I do, I knocked on the window. Well, they were happy to talk and advise me that they were the electrical contractors and they were waiting for the arrival of a lorry with the chargers on board. Well, wow, as a result. So we headed straight into Burger King for our coffees and a window seat. We began our meeting, looking at where we're going to be filming, what we're going to be doing the following week, and we kept an eye out to the window. And it wasn't long before they moved the van and then a lorry pulled in carrying two Instavolt chargers and it was no surprise to find that these looked like the customary 120 kilowatt single bay dual plug CCS and Chadamo uh, that they install in these sorts of fast food locations. How we managed to get talking to these guys I'll never know as it turns out they're Portsmouth or Southampton based and they'd just come up from there and were headed back down south for Winchester the very next day. It was already late and we discovered that this day had started off for them at about 3 a.m. When I asked them if this was a particularly busy time, no, it's been like this for quite some time. This was their normal. They are exceedingly busy, but they had no problems. They were quite content with their jobs. All in all, a very happy, chatty bunch of guys who regularly work together. Well, for context, there are multiple different gangs who prepare the installation. They include ground workers who prepare the site to electricians, delivery drivers, commissioners, and many, many more in between. And finally, to the painters, as we found at Killington Lakes on the M6 up at uh, the Lake District at a grid serve installation recently. If you want to see that one, there's a link to that video down below. Well, Matt works for BNA Transport. They're based in Portsmouth. They work mainly, not exclusively, for Instavolt. With Instavolt having the largest number of EV charges in the UK, he obviously does a fair bit of travelling. Well, it was fascinating to see the groundwork had already been done, all the electrical stuff, all the cabinets installed, and the site was already painted. And the last step here was the installation of the chargers. Well, Gridserve do it the other way round. They seem to install everything and then the painting was the very last job. Well, Matt's role was to get the chargers to the site in Preston. And from there, he was then heading off to Winchester via Manchester. In Manchester, with an empty lorry, he would pick up 15 Instavolt chargers and drive them down to Winchester. He'd previously taken some others down there and other people would be dropping off the rest in the next day or so and there'd be a grand total of 44 charges going in. After that, well, the whole country awaits him and he has no idea where he'll be at the end of the week. The lorry carries two chargers and a giant reel of cable and the actual installation of the chargers was a coordinated effort that they'd done many times previously. Mike and Stuart work for Morgan Ibs Group. They're electrical contractors based in Southampton and regularly meet up with Matt on an installation. Old mates, in fact. Now, just on a safety point of view, 
I was always filming from public land. I never got in their way. While talking, I was very careful not to distract them from any task they were performing. I did constantly check with them that I was in a safe location from which to film. Oh, and from a filming point of view, we're right for a relatively short meeting, not expecting the installation to be happening that night. So we have no cameras with us other than those on our smartphones. Well, they are both reasonable models, one being an iPhone, the other a Pixel, but neither up to the standard of our normal on the road camera and neither anywhere close to our studio cameras. But it is interesting, well, it's interesting to us that our studio cameras from a filming point of view, we arrive for a relatively short meeting, not expecting the installation to happen at night. So we have no cameras with us other than those on our smartphones. Now they are both reasonable models, being an iPhone and a Pixel, but neither are up to the standard of our normal on the road camera and neither are anywhere close to our studio cameras. But it is interesting, well, it's interesting to us anyway, that our studio cameras excel in bright studio lighting and probably would have performed worse in these dark street lit conditions. Well, if you look closely, you can see each of us filming in the background on many of the clips. Oh, by the way, if you think you know which smartphone is which, let us know in the comments down below. The heavy cable was offloaded first. When you look, each base had four bolts sticking up and a ducting with a blue cable pull through leading back to the single cabinet. The first task was to get the heavy cable through and this involved the pull through and brute force. Why the only fools and horses tag? Well, I'm sure the lads won't mind me mentioning it. So without naming names, the heavy cable is attached to the blue cord by a self-tightening sleeve. A bit like those trick Chinese finger traps where the harder you pull them, the tighter they grip. So one end of the pull through was already in the cabinet. The other end was attached to one of these socks that was slid over the end of the heavy cable. The heavy cable was maneuvered into place. The call was made to pull and the loose end of the blue pull through from the other dock disappeared down the hole. <laughs> Does that remind you of chandeliers? Anyone? Anyway, the blue pull through, well, it was still reachable. And even if it wasn't, they obviously have a device which they can use to insert a new pull through if ever it's necessary. And the cable was indeed pulled through, but it wasn't without a lot of effort. That cable is really heavy and Matt had to come to the rescue with the crane. But of course the crane, while it did pull the cable a good distance, the pull through snapped. But anyhow, finally the heavy cable arrived and it was cut off to the right length. The second cable pull through had a shorter run, much more direct and went in much quicker and easier. So now it was the turn of the chargers. They are offloaded, the pallet is removed from the bottom of them and lowered onto the base over the four bolts with amazing precision and the relevant cables fed up through the correct channels. The nuts were screwed down, securing the cabinets to the base. The lifting eyes were removed. It was actually interesting to see technology at work here because just about every stage was accompanied by a quick smartphone photo confirming that the job had been done and done correctly. Well, for Mike and Stuart, this makes the job easier if a touch longer, but it effectively helps them to follow a set procedure and clears them if things subsequently go wrong. Yeah, I did remember to bolt it down and tighten it. Here are the photos. Now, I've said many times that the number of EV public charges is already at a level that is sufficient for our current needs, at least in most places. We do have some black spots where coverage is still sorely lacking, but in many cases, all that is needed is patience. 
or Jonas and I were recently at Birch Moto Services. We're westbound on the M62, way up north, and these Tesla V3 chargers were actually installed almost two years ago, but only turned on in the last week or so. The delay here was the final DNO electrical connection. There are around 30 or 40,000 EV chargers in the country that have already been approved for planning, already started, and in some cases actually already finished, like at Birch, awaiting just the final connection. Those are already committed and they're likely to come online later this year. That number will make a huge difference and could fill in the gaps people already complain about, like in the east and the northeast of the country. I do still have an issue with the type and power of the Instavolt chargers, and listening to a number of CEOs from different CPOs, I still find Instavolt's strategy a bit confusing. An off-the-road hub is generally a place people will go to specifically to charge at a fast speed and always also able to find one or more chargers available. Facilities can often be fairly basic, like a Banbury. Instavolt has a single coster nearby that provides the toilet facilities unless you go for a little bit of a walk. The only other facility there is a drive through Miller and Carter Steakhouse. Well, often people just want a toilet and two cubicles in costas for the 32 charger bays seems a bit lacking. So most EV drivers will not find the facilities particularly appealing and most will not find the 120 kilowatts or even 150 kilowatt power appealing either. Grid serve hubs generally have facilities rivaling those of a small motorway services, including in many cases a post office, and their chargers are 350 kilowatts. Well, here in Preston, the Burger King closes at 11 pm, so those who want to take advantage of the Instavolt offer of 56 pence off peak after 10 pm have a very small window. I think a bit more joined up thinking might be needed. But praise where praise is due. This is part of a very large rollout offering EV drivers much more choice. We cannot always demand the right price. The right number, availability and reliability is a good start. Now, realistically, around 60% of all EV drivers will never use Instavolt. They will nearly always charge at home, so Instavolt will be an avoid at all costs. Well, certainly avoid at 85 pence. For the 30% or so who cannot charge at home, I suspect this will be an only ever after 10pm visit as a matter of course. And at that price, that is highly competitive. It's down below Fastnet and Ionity and actually down to some membership discounted prices that require a monthly fee. It, that is quite attractive. Now I'm going to be heading down to Winchester soon to see what they've installed down there. Uh, but this meeting in Preston was a bundle of information. I'm equally sure that on our travels we will come across Matt and Stuart and Mike once again. It was great meeting you. I hope you like the mention. I'm Dave. Now, If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. We know many of you watch the videos regularly and haven't yet subscribed. It makes such a difference to us. So if you haven't subscribed and you do like the videos and you do watch regularly, please take just a moment to subscribe. It is totally free of charge. This video, as always, is supported by our Patreon members, and we are so grateful to them for supporting the channel in the way that they do. So thank you, all our Patreon members. The numbers are growing at a lovely pace. So thank you very much, all the new members who are also joining. And in case you don't know, there are a lot of benefits to becoming a member. For less than the price of a coffee each month, you'll get access to some videos that we don't show anywhere else and not on YouTube. You'll get access to bloopers and outtakes. 
you will be notified on occasions when we're having a filming session uh, as to where we will be and what time we will be there so you'll be perfectly free to turn up um, you don't need to book you don't need to let us know if you're coming or not just turn up and if you do you'd be perfectly welcome to buy me a cup of coffee or i'll buy you one probably also a donut or two uh, we also have an active chat line that most people seem to use for questions and on those questions you'll always get a personal reply back from me so some good advantages for becoming a member just for the price of a cup of coffee have a look at the details down below in the uh, description so thank you very much for watching i'm dave